in an attempt to escape from what they believe to be a race of prehistoric yellow-skinned giants, Tarzan and his friends take to an underground river in a dugout canoe. The stream carries them through a mountainous cliff, on the far side of which they are on the verge of being drawn over the brink of a waterfall when Tarzan draws them ashore by means of his rope. On the following morning, they begin their search for a means of reaching the river below the falls. O'Rourke finds a well-worn trail which Tarzan believes to be man-made. A short distance along the path, the ape-man becomes suspicious and decides to investigate. Calling a halt, he is about to swing into the trees and advance alone when Darno cries out a sharp warning. As if by magic, the forest all around them becomes alive with yellow men. O'Rourke raises his rifle to shoot. Put down that rifle, O'Rourke. Don't move any of you. Slowly, cautiously, the circle of yellow giants narrows about the little group, waiting tensely, not knowing what to expect. Step by step, the yellow men approach. Their great spears held ready for instant use. Uncle Jim, Uncle Jim, they're going to kill us. Teddy, my dear. If that had been their intention, Janet, they could have done so long ago, and we would never have known what struck us. Now, look at their faces. They show more curiosity than cruel intent to kill. At a sign from one who appears to be their leader, the yellow men halt. The little company is completely and closely hedged in by the huge creatures. With the point of his spear almost touching the ape man's breast, the leader speaks gutturally. Hunga, look to Hunga. Oh, Wonga. Tuk to, tuk wa. Tarzan slowly shakes his head in a sign that he does not understand. The huge yellow savage thumps himself on the chest. Rola, Mungo. Rola, Mungo. Ah, he is telling you, Tarzan, that his name is Mungo. Yes. I am Tarzan. Tarzan of the apes. Tarzan. You, Tarzan. Barbs, the brute speaks English. You understand, Tarzan? Mungo. Understand, Tarzan. What you do here? We are trying to reach the river in the valley below. Find our way out of jungle. Uh. Tarzan, you come long, Mongo. Talk, talk. Atea. Atea? Who is Atea? Atea, great queen. Hmm. You give fire sticks. Mungo no hurt. You no give. Mungo take. Yes, and I'm not giving me rifle up to any savage oil. We'll keep our fire sticks, Mungo. You no give. Mungo take. Tarzan, I think it is best to comply with his demand. Temporarily, at least. They will only take them by force. We cannot hope to fight them all. But to give up without even trying. Say the word Tarzan, and I let that fellow have it right in the chest. The major and Wang are ready. Memono pasa, O'Rourke. You know, Tarzan, that if we were alone, I would be the first to offer resistance. But, Mademoiselle Jeannette, if we are killed, the pense toi, what will become of her? Right. Give up your rifle. Ah, oh, faith, Lieutenant, I don't like it. Neither do I, O'Rourke, mon ami. But we are only five, not counting Mademoiselle Jeannette. Look, look around you. There are at least 30 of them against us. All right, Mungo. You have our fire sticks. What now? Uh, you come long, Mungo, now. Talk, talk. Ah, they are. Gambu, hello, do. At the guttural words addressed to his followers, Mungo turns on his heel and stalks down the trail. Closely hemmed in by their gigantic yellow-skinned captors, Tarzan and his friends, now weaponless, follow. Allah Tarzan, my friend, come to sure you were right. What do you mean? About the trail being man-made and being used by men. Tarzan? Yes, O'Rourke. When do we make a fight on it? Eh? On the wait, wait, O'Rourke. Have you not noted that our captors are different from those others? All I know is that I don't like the looks of things. And the sooner we can get out of this, the better. Mais écoutez, Monsieur O'Rourke. 
Can you not understand that an attempt to fight or escape now would mean but one thing, death? We can make an awful good try at it all. I may think it will be killed anyway, sooner or later. And what of Mademoiselle Jeannette? No, no. We must protect her to the last man or rock. Of course. Yeah. Then the only way we can do that is to remain alive as long as we can. I do not think they would kill her. But they would not hesitate to do away with us. What do you think, Tarzan? He is right, O'Rock. Wait. All right, then, if you say so. We'll see it through. But at the first sign of treachery, I'm starting in on these heathen. <laughs> Avec quoi? Uh, with what, Monsieur O'Rock? We are on our... Uh, with me on two hands, Bigari. We'll wait a little, O'Rock, until we've seen this queen, Atea. Ah, excellent advice, my friend. And, Orok, I repeat, had these savages wished to, they could have killed us out of hand back there on the trail. Well, they're just as bad as the mothers that took us. They didn't kill us when they had the chance, even after we laid out half a dozen of them. Oh, but faith and begotty, they were all ready to feed us to the crocodiles, started in with me. Nevertheless, we are still alive. A good omen, my friend. And as long as we are alive... Is it too much to hope that a more propitious moment to consider escape will be given us? Eh? Oh, leave be, Wong. He'd talk the legs off a brass saint. <laughs> but you must admit I am at least logical. Oh, well, yes, maybe you're right, if, if that's what you mean. Dr. Andano, what do you make of the fact that these uh, creatures speak English? Or that one of them does, after a fashion? At some time, they must have had contact with English-speaking white men, Monsieur le Docteur. Naturally. But the two-toed ones beyond the cliff, they spoke no English, nor seemingly did they understand it. Oh, it is very easy to see that these fellows are of a higher mentality than the others. A little less of, shall I say, the abysmal brute? Exactly. And you have noticed the fact that not one of these captors of ours has claw feet? Monsieur le docteur, just what are you driving at? Have you never seen a red rose growing on the same bush with a white one, my friend? <laughs> Grafting, I believe the English call it. Not real, bon. I have seen... Tonnerre de presse, monsieur le docteur. You mean those beyond the underground river are really... Mais non, ça c'est impossible, utterly impossible. To the scientific brain, Lieutenant, nothing is impossible. Forced or scientific crossbreeding, in this instance we might call it grafting, is a scientific fact. I could cite you instances. However, it is a truly absorbing study. <laughs> non, 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 my... Moi, I cannot believe... Oh, uh, Mademoiselle Jeanette, you are puzzled? Well, we've left the first trail we were on, Lieutenant. Isn't this an elephant path we're following now? Ah, oh, very dear, so it is. <laughs> I was so deeply engrossed in a discussion with Monsieur le Docteur Wong that I did not notice. Tarzan! I know, Dano. We're headed away from the river. Look, over there in that clearing. Tantor. Elephants! A whole herd! See them yellow head and fooling with them bulls. They're handling the elephants like regular mahouts. Riding African elephants ain't supposed to be possible or healthy. So I've heard, Terry. Yet these fellows handle them easily enough. Look how the beasts lift the men up and put them on their backs. Apparently we are going to ride to the abode of the Queen Atea. We shall know immediately, Monsieur le Doctor. Here comes Mungo. City of Queen Atea. Long way. Why people go on elephant. Come. At a shout from Mungo, six great gray beasts each guided by a yellow-skinned giant, come forward. Tarzan steps quietly out to meet the nearest. At a gruff command from its rider, the brute's trunk reaches out, encircles the ape-man's body, and lifts him gently to a seat on its back behind the mahout. 
When all are mounted, the entire troop, following a wide path, strikes off into the depths of the jungle. At high speed, the elephants follow the winding jungle path until near sunset, the trail ends abruptly on the edge of a small saucer-like valley, treeless and barren. Half a mile distant, in the center of the plain, rises the city of Atea. Constructed of gray rock, the buildings are low, flat-roofed. One, apparently the palace, rises above the rest and is built entirely around and against a tall column of gray rock, like the keep of an ancient castle. Completely surrounding the city is a high, wide-topped stone wall with flat-roofed watchtowers every hundred yards. Over a well-traveled roadway, toward a massive gate, the elephants sway along. At their approach, the barrier swings open. Without pause, Mungo leads through a wide street crowded with gigantic yellow men and women to halt before a dome-roofed house. Mungo and several of his men dismount. At guttural commands, the elephants, carrying Tarzan and his friends, lift the whites to the ground with their trunks. Mungo leads the way into a wide circular chamber furnished with massive wooden couches covered with lion and leopard skins. White people, stay here. Pretty soon, Mungo will come back. Then you talk, talk, out there. Just like that. If the heathen queen's in a good humor, we can talk with her. If she ain't, oh, be gary, I wish I had me automatic. What good would it do you, my friend? If we kill this woman, the giants will annihilate us. A man cannot combat a swarm of ants or bees. Certainly not a horde of armed savages. Be reasonable, Terry. Wong's right. Great Scott, man, do you want to get us all killed with your craving for a fight? Yes, you'll probably get all the fighting you want, Terry, before we're out of this. It will come to fighting sooner or later. It depends on the queen. Oh, eh, hey, so say by. Very true. In the meantime, those couches look inviting. I think I shall lie down. Uh, Bigari, he's your friend Mungo, Dr. Wong. The head and devil shoot made a fast trip. They must be anxious to get over with this. Uh, oh, then, white people.